Everybody, welcome to GDPG. We are playing The Flame of the Flood. We are. It's a game by the Molasses Flood. Yeah, I'm super excited for this game because I saw it one day and I was like, Hey, Chris, have you ever heard of this game? This game looks awesome. And he's like, I've been following that game forever. Where have you been? So we're ready to play this. <laughs> Much like how most of our conversations go about <laughs> yeah. exciting games. And then he's like, why haven't you heard of this? I'll be like, because you never told me. So we're going to start on Traveler because I don't really know what I'm doing. I've played, I mean, I've played a little bit to understand the mechanics and everything. So you start off with a dog and a bunch of Oh, you just crows. start off with the dog. No, the, the dog, like, he's... Pulls the bag from the Yeah, pulls the, the bag body. from the dead body. But the funny thing is the dead body is a skeleton, which Do you would think... make you think that body's been there for a while. Yeah, I was going to say, do you think that that dead body was the dog's old owner, or do you think it's just the dog, like, fetching some supplies for you? Because it is a skeleton, right? So I feel like the dog probably didn't stick around for that long. So that's the first thing I wondered, and the very first thing I set out to find when I first started playing. So if you are wondering, for those who are just watching this, um, the like it, you can see right off the bat, she's like, huh, that's really strange. What's going on with this? But um, I'll show you, actually where it tells you that it's not her dog. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, okay. I'm so, surprised you found that out already. I'm awesome like that. <laughs> Literally, before we, we started recording this, you poked around for maybe 15 minutes. Yeah. All right. So, um, I mean, they're good at sharing some information. And it's information, of what I really like, it's information that you have to go find if you are if you want mm. to find it. It's not going to hammer you over the head. Right off that radio signal. The old radio is still working. You just need to get closer to the source. Maybe find out or uh, maybe find high ground to hear the messages clearly. Wait, that's not where I found that out. Oh, no. <laughs> now I don't know where I found it. Oh, now I feel like an idiot. Well, uh, I might stumble across it at some point. Um, da, 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 I mean, was da, da, it under... Da, 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 da. Was it under the... I guess the... I mean, the, the bag says it's... What's the dog's name? Um... Aesop. Aesop, that's right. That is how we found to pronounce it, because I was actually thinking it was Aesop, because that is generally, being from the south, that is probably how we would have pronounced that. Oh, well, man, maybe that is how you should pronounce it. Maybe the uh, pronunciation Thing YouTube channel wrong. that we pulled up was uh, a little too correct. Okay, so right off the bat, right, we, we're, we start off by the fire. We notice that we are not hungry or anything like that very interesting because when i started my last playthrough i started off a little hungry did you really yep well okay did you is traveler easy mode is that traveler's what easy mode and that is what i started off as well oh, so really? yeah we are so we should be i'm gonna steal this charcoal i mean the game is procedurally generated now. i wouldn't be totally surprised if things like hunger are also slightly randomized um my question um, to that then would be like what other components determine that right like Maybe you start off hungrier if there are there's more food around, or maybe you started off hungrier because you had the tutorial to go through. It maybe because uh, I think we we I didn't really don't rem this, this is tutorial. kind of the tutorial. Oh, okay, it basically puts you in a safe place that you can go look around. All right, so um, also I've already gotten a few different things than I would have by now. So even this beginning area is is different gives me different stuffs so what is the point what are you of... yelling at me for buddy what's the point of this game oh yeah i missed him uh point of this game i i'm not exactly entirely sure I, okay so you like as you travel game. on the right uh, on the raft you're trying to get from one location to the next mm -hmm. so there's like 10 areas uh did it came from oh here it is a fine home for a spell but it's time to move on see where this dog came from maybe oh. there's somebody else out there um so it, it's once again I, you do have to find it though and here here's your tutorial that's that's it huh. if you choose to look for it you will find it also the tutorial is in some of the trailer videos they came out with they pretty <laughs> much teach you right then and there if you don't watch trailer videos then you'll just have to figure it out on your own oh i do kind of remember that actually that was i think that was a smart way to kind of like have a gameplay trailer teach the player some or the potential player some mechanics yeah and still make it fun to watch Hey. Um, because it was, was it styled kind of like a, here. like, survival 101? Yeah, yeah, it was survival tips, like survival 101. <laughs> uh, so, boom, telling you right here, there's polluted water when you first get it. It will probably be polluted, and you have to unpollutify it. I realize that's not a word, but that was much more fun. So, I think this... Oh, this is, these are crates now. Last time I could it was just like a treasure chest or something. Well, yeah, it's procedurally generated, so it's gonna, it's, it's gonna change every single time. 
Um, this is another important thing. This place, uh, um, cleaned this place out long ago. Nothing left to, uh, but dust. I think if you check it again. Okay, no, it just says, but it sounds, is she saying she has cleaned it out? So mm. she's been here for a while. I mean, they kind of imply that too with the, uh, this, this place was a nice place to stay for a spell, but mm -hmm. it's time to move on. So, um, right off the bat, they give you, this is one thing I could say they could have done a little bit stronger about the beginning tutorial, but I understand why they didn't. Uh, so right now I have a jar, there's polluted water. It tells you about the polluted water, but it doesn't tell you anything else about it. So mm -hmm. you start to get curious. And this was just based off of my own curiosity. I'm in water right now. I'm going to use it and well, bam, I now have water yeah. in there. Um, also, when you pick up things on the right, you'll see that they're showing like, hey, uh, you found a new schematic for how to make these things. So I can make clean water with my polluted water and my water filter. Hmm. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And uh, well, bam. And also what's pretty cool is their uh, inventory is not completely binary. Um, so where's that water filter? I have two out of three uses left on this one water filter. Oh, okay. Right. And oh, that's nice. And then those still will stack up. Mm -hmm. Now I wonder though if, um, say you had like five water filters, right? Does it separate those two from the? Does does it separate the partially used one from the stack, or does it keep it in the stack? I'm not sure. I imagine it uh, probably keeps it in the same stack and just lets you know. But or or maybe it yeah. increases that number of three to like six if you had two water filters. Oh, okay. I'm not sure. Yeah, that would be an interesting UI design for that. I, I I think I like the latter of what you said, but I think it'd still be intuitive enough if it kept it in the stack and still said, like, two out of mm -hmm. three. Um, it only takes going through one filter to realize, oh, it's going to reset the counter when it's used up. Yes. And takes the one completely used filter out of my inventory. I started with a splint. I don't think I started with a splint last time. That's pretty cool. Okay, cool thing I pointed out to you earlier. I'm moving, right? I can go to my quick items menu. I'm going to press this uh, left trigger here and then let go and it still runs in that direction for me. Yeah. So basically, while I'm moving, I can go to my quick inventory and still continue on the path that I was going because they felt like if you're probably running from something or whatever mm -hmm. the case is, um... You can uh, you can do, go to your quick item menus or your quick menu and uh, still be on the go, so you don't have to stop and look in your bag. And the game doesn't seem like it pauses when you're in this menu, so the quick the quick interface is actually really important mm -hmm. for that reason. So this is the uh, 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 what do they call it? A check cache. Um, basically, uh, you look at it and uh, it will up it give you quests. So I have a new quest right now, and it's called Basic Tools. If I make a stone knife and a stone hammer, then I will get a free campfire out of it. And maybe like something now. This is a good tutorial system, because it's it's an optional thing, right? But yes. I think things like quests are a good way to kind of lead your player along a certain path. Um, and it's it actually, that's really important you bring that up, because right away, right, I, I like, it says, oh, your basic tools, you need to make a stone knife and a uh, stone hammer. And you're like, okay, cool. So I guess I'll go uh, look up how to make a stone knife and a stone hammer. And uh, the, the one part with the interface yeah. is there's 69 items or whatever total. So like you have to break it down. It kind of becomes a pain in the ass finding things. Yeah, I was going to so. say, th those tutorial or those quests are kind of nice too because they teach you like, hey, this is a thing you can do. Um, and there's a threshold. Uh, this isn't necessarily game design, but this is sort of like design in general. Yeah. Um, but like, if you present someone with too many options, it's it's like a um, uh, you like oversaturate their their attention. I get it's not a really good way to describe it, but basically like they're not going to spend the time to go through every single detail. Yeah, they're um, gonna get frustrated actually yeah, it, and just ignore it outright. It's like quantity overload. Um, so you 69 isn't a ton, right? But it's enough to probably make most players skim through it rather than look at each individual thing mm -hmm. and be like, okay, I can remember all of these. Like, I can't, I can't remember all 69 things. So yeah. missions like that are, are probably pretty useful for that reason. Um, so the one thing I was going to look up, but I didn't have any items to like bring the stone knife and stone hammer to, to quick view. Mm -hmm. um, because once you get the item, like cl a close enough amount of items, it will be like, hey, so the schematic is right here. And this is how you make the item. Anyway, the in order to make a stone hammer, you need a stone knife. 
So it's <laughs> showing you that, hey, you can craft. And on top of that, once you craft a thing, you may need to craft another thing using the thing that you craft. Mm. Um, so this is very simple. The rafting is is like one of their big things that they wanted to uh, look at those wolves in the Whoa. background there. Wolves in the background? Yeah, see the, oh, you can't see the, oh, the eyes the, there. Oh, the eyes? Yep. Oh. So I don't know. Like, there's nothing shown that I can dock there. So I think that's just shown it to be creepy. Oh, there's so many in there. I have a stamina bar right the, uh, above my character here. Uh, is there something I can grab? Oh, my brain's having a hard time, like, understanding that perspective. The <laughs> trees and that, that little, like, land oh, mass were yes. moving weird. And the trees, like, fade. That's, from... that's what it is. It's because they fade toward the bottom, which makes sense. But, like, if the land, like, intersects with it at a certain point, it, like, oh, man, it layers weird. Oh, yeah. So that this... said, though, the game is really beautiful. Oh, it's it's wonderful. Especially it looks for great. an Unreal Engine game. So this is made in Unreal Engine. Ah. Um, I think Unreal Engine 4, probably. Um, oh, oh I, no. There we go. Ooh, way to I go. I know I was going to run into something eventually. Oh, God. Um, and Why I, did I go this way? Not that Unreal Engine oh, Jesus. Is, okay. is ugly. I, by all means, Unreal Engine generally produces really beautiful games. Um, but I usually don't like them very much aesthetically speaking because they, they all kind of have this. Samey. They all feel like they're in the Unreal Engine. It, it's the lighting effects. I, I think I, I figured out. Um, but this game, oh, I, I think they that. they did Crap. a really good job, kind of like making it feel like it's its own thing. Um, yes. Side note too, by the way, we're playing this with the Steam controller, and actually, <laughs> it's really nice. They did yeah. a really good job with this integration, and they give you um, a decent amount of power that I'm not used to having with a controller. Okay, we're going to go over this way. Yeah, it makes me wonder if uh, if oh, it geez. were a... Ooh, nice job. If it were a standard gamepad... Oh, got it. Fishing line. It's all ooh, mine. Ooh, nice. So you don't even stop. I kind of like that. It makes it sort of a, like... You know what it reminds me of? It reminds me a lot of... Um, uh, Super Mario RPG. They had... A similar like I think it was a waterfall mini game, um, but there was a lot of like timing things and moving along with the current and then making sure you get the items at the right points mm -hmm. before you get to the end. Um, and it was actually really cool. Like, obviously, this is far more advanced than that, but like that was the first thing that comes to mind. I'm I'm sure they took a, like a lot of people also say like they they obviously took a lot of mechanics from Don't Starve. Um, being that that survival kind of feel to it, but it's a completely different game. And yeah, Don't they, Starve looks. I, I I rather, from what I've seen of this, Don't Starve I feel like is probably far more difficult than this game is. Um, but this also feels yeah. like it has a bit more story or more progression to it. Don't Starve is like proper sandbox. Yeah, this seems a lot more linear. Mm -hmm. So uh, with this, I just got to a dock station. It allows me to repair my uh, raft as well as upgrade the raft. Now, the thing that I find interesting is since I can't do any of this, it's not telling me what those upgrades even do. Mm. So in a lot of the upgrades, it doesn't give you a, a number. Mm. Uh, so it's just kind of like, like for instance, um, if I go to my, my stuff here, it's like, uh, won't protect you against heavy weather, but hell, it's better than going naked. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's what I mean. Actually, that's, that does that's... have a number. The little green arrows right above the you... um, the name show you what it does. But like a lot of things, they don't tell you exactly what the the stat is. That's fair. Do you think that that dialogue or that like uh... verbiage choice, by the way, was sort of like a southern touch? Is that like? Oh yeah. Yeah. We, oh, we, yeah, we're, we were talking about we're so the setting is post apocalyptic um, America, right? So they, they left it intentionally pretty vague, but we think it's probably down the Mississippi Ooh. River, um, and we think it's probably more toward the south, so Mississippi. Um, that would that would make a lot of sense. <laughs> it's it's a little too lush, I think, to be more north, in my opinion. I mean, it can be pretty lush in the north, too, but it, it feels very southern in some parts. The, the, yeah, I, I, I think that the landscape uh, just seems a little, uh, you know, southern in its way to me. Mm -hmm. um, the uh, It's very interesting, though. You do not see many games that are post-apocalyptic like this in America, specifically. And I think that's... And what's cool about that is not because, like... I'm from America. What's cool about it is that um, that America is actually, or at least was, actually beautiful, and there it are still a, is lot, in a lot of areas. In a lot of areas, yeah, actually, in a lot of places that are south, just not I was Alabama. Say, mostly. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's terrible. Um, and 
so, but in general, like America is or was whatever you like to think of it, a beautiful country. Um, and there are a lot of species of plants and animals and stuff like that that are indigenous only to this mm-hmm. this uh, th- this continent or at least this area specifically. And you're never going to see it anywhere else. And we take it for granted. We don't think of that as exotic, but oh, absolutely, there are so many things that are. Yeah, some of my favorite wilderness survival uh, documentaries and TV shows like Survivor Man, some of the best stuff is when they do stuff in, in the America, or in North America, rather. I was going to say the Americas, but really, uh, we're talking specifically about North America, but it's 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 really beautiful and dangerous. Yeah. Um, but anyway, that's all we have for this episode. Uh, I want to ask you guys, though, about what you think about the lack of tutorial. Like, they don't really hold your hand, right? Um, but they, yeah. they kind of like give you tutorial pieces if you go looking for it. So I want to ask, do you oh, think that man. they were successful in delivering a tutorial through those means? Or do you think they should have, um, at least for the first time, held the player's hand a little bit more? Does that, does that sound like I a I think that's question? a pretty good question, actually. <laughs> um, yeah, it's... No, it's good. <laughs> <laughs> cool. I Thank mean, you. that's basically what we talked about, so... Yeah, yeah. So thank you everybody for watching. Um, stay tuned for some more. Definitely vote for more of the flame in the flood. Got it. I, I keep reversing it somehow. <laughs> uh, vote for more of it if you want to see us play more of this. And in addition to that, vote for some other games that we have in this little voting menu. Because it changes every day. So uh, we like to know what you guys like to see, but we also like to play what we like to play too. So we like to do both. Yeah. We generally choose one that fits both parties' needs. I'm enjoying it so far, so (laughs) keep voting for this game until I get sick of it. Yes, please. (laughs) Cool. Well, thank you for watching, and uh, we will see you in the next episode. See y'all later. See you in the bayou. That's so terrible. (laughs)